Let's get into it. Warm up with a basic knee-to-chest stretch. It'll help relieve the tension in your lower back. Lie down on your back, pull your right knee into your chest with your hands. Squeeze your abs and press your spine into the floor. Hold it like that for 5 seconds. Release the leg back down. Now, lift your left leg the same way. Try 3 reps on each leg. The next exercise is the wall sit. It's a must if you spend a lot of time at a desk or on the couch. Stand one step from the wall. Now lean back until you feel your spine flat up against it. Slowly start to bend your knees. Remember to press your lower back into the wall. Stay like this and count to 10. Then carefully and slowly move back up. Do 10 reps of this exercise. Move into Upward Facing Dog. If your back hurts a lot, better skip this one. But if it's just occasional pain, this move can really strengthen up your back muscles, which is great for your posture. Lie down with your hands pressing into the floor by your middle ribs. Engage your muscles and lift your chest. Next, your hips, knees, and legs lift off the floor, and the tops of your feet press into it. Draw your shoulder blades back and down and look forward. Stay here for about 5 breaths, then go back down. Try to do 5 reps. Practice it with a chair first if you're worried about injuries. Put your hands on the edge of the chair and open up your chest, just like the floor version. Keep those arms straight. Next up is Bird Dog. It keeps your low back tight when your arms and legs are moving around. Get down on all fours and squeeze those abs. Lift one leg up to hip level and extend it out behind you. Now stretch the opposite arm in front of you. Hold it for 5 seconds, then do the same on the other side. Try for 12 reps on each side. If it seems too easy, try holding the pose for longer. Another animal combo coming up, cat-cow. This one makes you more flexible and helps soothe any unwanted tension in your lower back. Get back down on all fours and keep your knees hip-width apart. Pull your belly button up into your spine woo, and put your head down. You're doing the cat! Stay here for 5 seconds. You'll feel a nice stretch in your lower back. Now go back to neutral. Lift your head and lower your belly. Keep your spine long, don't slouch. Congratulations, you're a cow! Stay there for 5 seconds. Try to do it another 15 times. Inhale on cow and exhale on cat. Alrighty, enough of the animal world. Let's get into the bridge position. Lie on your back with your knees up and your feet on the floor. It's okay if your back curves a bit, you don't have to keep it flat. Push your heels into the floor, squeeze those abs, and lift your hips. When your body's in a straight line, hold it for 10 seconds. Try 5 reps on this one. Now, let's do some partial crunches. Skip this one if your back is hurting today. Otherwise, get ready for a delicious squeeze. Lie on your back just like in the bridge pose. You can support the back of your head with your fingertips. Now, squeeze your abs and lift your shoulders slowly. Keep your feet and low back on the mat. Go up, pause, then go down. Can you do 10 reps? I know you can. All right, you need a little break after that last one. Get a towel or a blanket and roll it up for some belly flops. It's going to feel great. Put the roll horizontally in front of you. Now lie down on it face down. The roll should be under your hips. You can put your head to either side, doesn't matter. Just relax. After a few minutes, you'll feel the tension washing away. Flip onto your stomach, but keep that towel roll under your hips. It's back extension time. Keep your arms down by your sides, palms facing in. Lift your shoulders, head, and arms and hold for a few seconds. Then relax back down. Ready for the full experience? Lift your legs along with your shoulders, head, and arms. Let's do some lying lateral leg lifts. That's a lot of L's. Lie on your side next to a wall. Press your back and legs up against it and keep your lower legs straight. Try not to lean your hips forward. Squeeze your core and slowly lift your top leg up and down. Try for 10 reps, then flip over and do the other side. To cool down and make your core muscles more stable, 
finish up with some lower back rotations. Lie down on the floor, face up, and put your arms out to the side. Bend your knees, then slowly move them to one side, head facing the other way. Hold for 10 seconds, and then go back to neutral. Move your knees to the other side just like before. Do 3 reps on each side, take a deep breath, relax, and smile. This routine is great for your lower back and can even prevent injuries by making you stronger and more flexible. If you try it and feel the pain get worse, stop right away and see a doctor. There are also some exercises that you should never ever do if you have lower back pain. Toe touches stretch your ligaments and spinal discs and stretch your lower back muscles too much. Basic sit-ups also put too much pressure on your spinal discs, so just do the partial crunches I showed you. Regular leg lifts aren't that great either. When you lift both legs while lying on your back, you're asking a lot from your core. Stick to the lateral leg lifts we did earlier. They're hard enough. Your back will really appreciate if you wear comfy shoes without extreme heels, especially if you move around all day. It doesn't like slouching and prefers good posture. Remember to warm up before any physical activity, and don't lift objects that look and feel too heavy. How about a wheeled suitcase or even a briefcase, instead of a heavy backpack? Check if all the surfaces you use every day are the right height for you. You shouldn't have to slouch down to use them. If you're a surgeon or nurse, bus driver, construction worker, farmer, airline crew, firefighter, or police officer, janitor, or have some other job that involves a lot of pulling, lifting, and twisting, stay alert and keep active. Try some aerobics on the weekend. Take a yoga class or do Pilates to keep your muscles strong and flexible. (sighs) You wake up and head to the shower. Make it a fun one and sing a song or two. A 10-minute long concert will help you drop around 20 calories depending on how much you weigh. Add some energetic head whipping, you just double that amount. Next, you brush your teeth. Do it thoroughly, dentists recommend brushing for at least 2 minutes. Don't forget the gum line. Go in circular motions up and down. Done! 10 calories off your account. Don't leave the bathroom just yet. Why don't you try that hairstyle you've seen on YouTube the other day? Holding your arms up straight while you're drying and styling your hair burns around 100 calories in 30 minutes. Next stop, the kitchen. Eating breakfast is crucial. It helps you burn twice as many calories compared with those who go for a larger dinner. As you're enjoying your omelet, you're letting your body know you won't be starving anytime soon. It realizes it doesn't have to make fat reserves and won't make you crave sweets later in the day. How about a banana oatmeal smoothie? Wait, don't throw away the peel. Your body needs more energy to process it, and it makes you feel full sooner. Plus, it's packed with vitamin A and antioxidants and makes your metabolism run like clockwork. Top your morning meal with some green tea or oolong. Either of them speeds up your metabolism, which is awesome for fat loss. All those nutrients and antioxidants are great for you, too. All right, time to leave the house. You pack the essentials. Here's your healthy lunch. All right, fill up that bottle with some water to go. It's a natural calorie burner, and it suppresses appetite like a pro. When you feel like you want a soda, just remind yourself you have a healthier option on you. Keep it cool for an even better effect. You finally step outside and get in the car. Turn up the AC. Your metabolism gets faster in cold temperatures because it brings your brown fat into action. You start shivering. It's getting too cold. On the bright side, shivering for half an hour will help you lose 200 calories. Oh no, you're stuck in traffic. Wow, what a good-looking chocolate bar. But you can't have it right now. Instead, you get your sugar-free chewing gum out. It makes you feel full without adding fat to your hips. And chewing it for one hour helps you burn around 10 extra calories. You park by the office building and get in line for the elevator. It's moving so slowly, you decide to take the stairs. Luckily, your office is on the 4th and not the 44th floor. There's still time before your working day officially starts. Your colleagues are sharing hilarious stories about the weekend. Steve's dog got into a bucket with paint and splashed it all over the house. You can't help laughing out loud with everyone else. 
your metabolism loves a good joke and starts working more intensively. Plus, it works out different muscles, tones your tummy, and boosts your immune system. Congrats! You've just burned an extra 20 calories. Time to get to work! You have two reports to write, one presentation to create, and like a hundred phone calls to make. You nervously tap your pen on the desk, drum your finger, and wiggle your legs under the table. The project isn't going as easily as planned. You start playing with your rings. The good news is, constant motion, even fidgeting, is a form of cardio. Stretch your arms and legs for some aerobics. Oh, you can't skip that phone call. While on it, stand up and move around the room. It's getting emotional. You start gesturing with your arms. All that fidgeting put together is worth 300 calories a day. You have an important document to print out. It's taking forever! You run to the printer and then back to your desk. It's still not ready. You make another attempt. Now it's only printing it sheet by sheet. That means 9 extra runs to pick them up. Ah, perfect! You feel like you need to use the bathroom. You choose the one that's at the other end of the floor. The more steps you take, the better. You're back at your desk. Oops, your boss is mad at you. That report was long overdue. You take a deep breath and try to relax. Stress makes your body produce more cortisol. That hormone makes you crave sugary and fatty comfort foods and overeat. Instead of stressing out, though, you take a sip of cold, healthy water, straighten up in your chair, and look at the office clock. It's lunchtime! Take that lunchbox you brought from home for a walk in a nearby park. It's sunny outside, and you can't miss that portion of vitamin D coming your way. Scientists say people who spend less time in the sunlight store more fat and lose it more slowly. You rush back to the office. You're lucky to have a sit-stand desk. An hour of standing instead of sitting while you're working takes around 50 extra calories off your total score. You take a small break to share about your new work project online. Your friend is texting you about plans for tonight, and you text back. That active discussion in typing just won you 20 calories in half an hour. You're getting closer and closer to your 1,000 calories goal. Everyone's leaving. The working day is over. You have some shopping to do for that party you're hosting tonight. That trolley is so full of yummy stuff. As you're pushing it down the aisles, you're burning calories at the speed of 200 per hour. You decide you also need a new outfit for the party. Each one you pick and try on is worth a dozen calories. And putting on these tight-fitting jeans must be worth 100 calories alone. You're finally home. There's a whole bunch of things to do before the guests arrive. You start with washing a whole sink of yesterday's dishes. That's worth 100 calories. Your bathroom has long been crying for a cleanup. 35 minutes of scrubbing every surface in there is equivalent to 35 minutes on the treadmill. You love your guests so much, you decide to also clean the inside and outside of your windows. 30 minutes later, the job is done, and you can cross another 100 calories off the score. The living room will be the main party spot. You vacuum it thoroughly for a half an hour, and you just burnt 50 extra calories. You want to make it look even more perfect. You move furniture around a bit, change the old light bulbs, and alphabetize your book collection to impress your guests. That half-an-hour workout gets you 100 calories closer to your goal. You look out your crispy clean window and see there's work to do outside as well. Working on your lawn with a push mower is just as good as a power walk. That's 200 calories in half an hour. And that is your friend Sue and her husband Joe, and his best friend Matt and his girlfriend Lily. And you gotta hug them all. It makes them feel loved and helps you get rid of 10 more calories. You decide to impress everyone with your musical skills. You stand up to maximize the effect. This half-hour-long guitar concert just brought you 100 calories closer to the goal. Enough music for the day, your friends want to play some games. Video games and even stuff like Uno, Scrabble, and Monopoly are all excellent calorie burners. It's all about the adrenaline. Well, someone notices it's 11 p.m. and you all have to wake up for some work tomorrow. Your friends leave, and you sit down to watch some TV. 30 minutes of your favorite show, and another 30 calories burnt. It's been such a long day, you definitely need a relaxing hot bath. It's just as good for your final goal as a 30-minute walk. 
While you lay there, watching the bubbles, you do the math for the day. And it looks like you've not only reached, but well overreached the 1,000 calories goal. Your final contribution to that calorie account will be some healthy sleep. If you don't get enough of it, your metabolism slows down and your appetite grows strong. The exact number of calories you burn while sleeping depends on your weight and age. But taking care of your sleep quality is good for everyone. So buy yourself a better mattress, put away all your gadgets before bed, and stick to a healthy sleeping schedule. Night-night! If you aren't a real beginner, training the entire body on the same day isn't going to be effective or lead to fast muscle growth. You'll only have time to do a handful of sets for each body part. It's true that this way, you'll work your muscles more often, but you won't have enough practice for each group. Try splitting your workouts. For example, an arm day, a leg day, and a back and chest day. Then a pizza day. Wait, how did that get in here? Resting too long between sets is another typical mistake you might be doing. Chatting with fellow gym goers and checking your phone are the most common culprits. The point isn't to rest until you're ready to lift again. If you do, you won't make your muscles work with the needed partial recovery. Your rest periods shouldn't be longer than 60 seconds. Sometimes, to build muscle mass, you just need to sleep more. After food, sleep is the second most important thing that helps your body recover and repair. If you don't get enough sleep, the levels of your stress hormones can grow. It will lead to weight gain, not muscle growth. You must give your body some encouragement to build up new muscle tissue. It's done by telling your muscles, that's good, you can do it, you're a winner! Now, actually it's done by lifting weights that are getting heavier and heavier with time. It makes your body think it needs more muscle mass to deal with the challenge. On the other hand, the weights shouldn't be too heavy. If you can only do 4-5 to reps, it's probably too much for you. The weight should be light enough for you to do at least 10 repetitions. To gain muscle mass, you need to eat lots of protein. True, proteins are made up of amino acids that are literally the building blocks of life. But it doesn't mean you should eat only proteins, ignoring fat and carbohydrates. Carbs provide you with the energy you need to work out. And fats are responsible for growth-related hormones, like testosterone. At the same time, make sure you get enough protein. It's crucial for the process known as muscle protein synthesis. When you work out, you break down your muscle fibers with tiny tears. While repairing these tears, they grow back bigger, increasing in mass. But if you want this process to go smoothly, your body has to get enough protein – around half a gram per one pound of body weight. If you don't do some stretching before and after your muscle-building workout, you'll miss out on a vital part of the process. Stretching after the training sets off the recovery process. Stretching before prepares your body for the workout that's about to start. But it's not only about making your muscles less tight and lowering the risk of injury. You should also stretch the fascia. That's something like a bag that holds your muscle tissue. By stretching it, you provide your muscles with more room to grow. You probably overwork. If your main goal is not to lose weight but to gain muscle mass, doing too much cardio is going to be counterproductive. You'll just lose the calories you need to bulk up your muscles. So eat as much as you need and don't worry about putting on weight. Cutting-edge gym equipment does look cool, but good old barbells and dumbbells are more effective when it comes to stimulating muscle fibers. They also help you strengthen your stabilizer muscles. Thanks to that, you can lift heavier weights. Plus, these bells have a free range of motion, lowering the risk of injury. You might not be eating enough. Hmm, not my problem. When you work out, you need tons of energy, or in other words, food. Your body can't create new muscles out of thin air. Try to have at least three large and three smaller meals a day. You might fail to track your progress. Whatever training routine you follow, you should record how many reps and sets you do. Plus, note down the exact weight you use every time. It'll help you figure out how much weight you need to lift next time. By hopping your training routine, you do a disservice to your body. 
it needs at least 3 months to adjust to a new pattern. A shorter period of time won't be enough for you to get into the swing of things, and your body won't be able to experience muscle growth and true strength gain. Don't try to confuse your muscles by constantly changing exercises and workout schedule. Better stick to some basic moves and increase their intensity bit by bit. Your entire body is two-thirds water. As for your muscle cells, they contain up to 79% water. Not drinking enough can prevent you from gaining more muscle tissue. The standard 6 to 8 glasses a day is okay, but if you want to be more precise, drink as much water as half of your weight in ounces every day. For example, if you weigh 100 pounds, it will be 50 ounces of water, about 6 glasses. The speed at which you lift weights is important too. Your muscles need to be under tension for some time. That's why all that bulking up occurs. A set of 10 repetitions within 10 seconds is too fast. Try to make your sets last at least half a minute. If you're in bad shape, you won't be able to control the weights, and then you'll be working out everything but the needed muscle. Plus, you'll engage your tendons and joints more than absolutely necessary. It can lead to injury. You're supposed to rely on your muscles to do the work. If you aren't ready to lift the weight you've chosen, you'll likely hit the strength plateau. It's a point when you stop having progress in building up muscle mass. Your body will try to compensate for the strain by involving the groups of muscles you didn't plan to use. You might be sticking to the same rep range too much. There's a common belief that 5-8 to eight repetitions are, on average, enough to build more muscle. But once you're no longer a beginner, you'd better move from the low rep range with 3 to 4 repetitions to medium 6 to 8 reps and then high 12 to 15 repetitions. Try to be mindful of the muscles you're using. Pay attention to how you contract and squeeze them. If you're just going through the familiar motions, you aren't fully engaged in the process. Proteins, carbs, and fats are great. But you should also get all those micronutrients that help your muscles grow. If your body lacks certain minerals and vitamins, tough workouts can harm it. Add more fruit and non-starchy veggies to your diet. Your body breaks down most carbs you get from food into glucose, a type of sugar and the main source of fuel for your cells. When you don't need this glucose for energy, it gets stored in your muscles as something named glycogen. By skipping breakfast, you make your body get energy somewhere else, for example, from the very glycogen in your muscle tissue. Don't wait for this, have some protein or slow digesting carbs, like beans, lentils, veggies, or whole grains. Otherwise, there might be a backslide in your progress. Your muscle growth won't be instant. It can take months or even years, not weeks. The more inexperienced in weightlifting you are, the faster you'll notice muscle gain. But even in this case, it won't be something that will happen overnight. Some bodybuilders claim that if you want to get more muscular, you should eat all the time. But there's a catch here. In the first part of the day, your body needs carbs. But later on, after lunch, your metabolism slows down. That's when the carbs you consume are more likely to get stored as fat. You decide to bulk up in three months. You put a poster of a bodybuilder on your wall for motivation. The first thing you do to reach your new goal is go to bed. Healthy sleep is the second most important thing after food to help your body recover and repair. You need 7 to 9 hours of sleep per night for protein production and the release of human growth hormone. It goes faster while you're in dreamland. If you don't get enough sleep, your stress hormones can go up. It can make you gain weight, not grow muscles. The next morning you wake up well rested and one hour earlier than usual to get the right breakfast. You cook some eggs that are packed with omega-3s, protein, and amino acids. You need all of those to build lean muscle mass. You also get a bowl of fat-free Greek yogurt with berries on top. It fuels you up with protein, calcium, and iron for long-lasting energy. A protein shake to go will help you increase blood flow to your muscles and make it easier for your body to process and use carbs. You arrive at the gym and do a warm-up before your main routine. Your trainer helped you plan a full body workout, which is perfect for beginners. It includes one leg, one push, and one pull, and one core exercise. 
He also told you that you should always start your routine with compound movements like squats, rows, or bench press. They engage many muscles at the same time, and it will release more muscle-building hormones in your body. You can move to isolation movements when you feel you're getting tired. So, you start with squats. They engage the entire lower body and make it release human growth hormone. They help improve muscle mass throughout your body because they're so physically demanding. You try to squeeze in as many squats as you can and forget about proper form. You finish each squat halfway and keep your feet right next to each other. That's a classic newbie mistake. You can never get good results if you aren't paying attention to how you're doing the exercises. You might even injure yourself. Your feet must be hip width apart. As soon as you approach the bottom of the movement, you must squeeze your glutes to go back up for the next rep. Barbell bench press is the push exercise of the day. It's perfect for your chest and is safe when you keep the elbows at 45 degrees out from the body. As you rest between the exercises, you tell your trainer about the new workout you found. But he tells you to stick to your workout schedule. When you constantly change exercises and try to go too fancy, you only confuse your muscles. If you stop seeing progress and want to spice things up, you should do it carefully. You can replace barbells with dumbbells, front squats with a back squat or add one element to your regular routine. The most important thing isn't diversity, but progressive overload. When you put more and more load on your muscles, they'll have to adapt to it and grow bigger and stronger. You move on to pull-ups. It's a perfect test of your upper body muscular strength and one of the few moves that works your back and biceps. You should be able to start with six slow proper form pull-ups and steadily get to 12 reps. You feel it's too easy for you, so you grab a dumbbell and hold it between your ankles as you go up and down. You try to move in a full range without breaking form. It's important to maximize muscle adaptation. Reverse crunch is your core exercise of the day. It works out the full length of your six-pack muscle and will give you strong and powerful lower abs. You want to wrap things up after 10 reps, but your trainer tells you that you really have to tie your muscles to near failure. It means you must feel like you wouldn't be able to finish one more rep because of fatigue. You move on to some weightlifting. You gotta go heavy and aim for less reps under control rather than many reps with an easy and comfortable weight. Your friend is passing by and you chat a bit about your progress. A siren goes off. Your gym is equipped with a chat control system. You can't rest between sets until you're ready to lift again. When you do it, your heart rate lowers your body can't refuel your muscles, and they won't get the partial recovery they need. Your rest periods shouldn't be longer than 60 seconds. It's enough time to get some water. Two-thirds of all the water in your body is in your muscles along with protein. So if you want more muscles, you must increase your water intake. You can figure out exactly how much of it you need depending on your weight. You're done with your workout and add some stretching to top it. Stretching after the training sets off the recovery process. It makes your muscle tissues longer and gives you extra flexibility. You need it to perform strength building moves with a greater range of movement which makes them more effective. Your muscles become less tight and you minimize the risk of injury. When you stretch your fascia, aka the bag that holds your muscle tissue, you give your muscles more room to grow. Enough gym for the day. Next stop, lunch. You must keep the right balance between protein, carbs, and fats, and also help your nutrient portioning go right. Your body decides which nutrients to use as fuel, store as fat, or put into muscle building. When you miss out on certain nutrients, it might store too many calories as fat. Plus, lack of vitamin E can give you muscle weakness, and not enough vitamin A can result in dizziness and loss of balance. You start with some salmon. It's a perfect source of protein and is also rich in omega-3 fatty acids. They help reduce the amount of insulin in your bloodstream. Insulin boosts fat storage. Tuna can be a healthy alternative to salmon with the same benefits. Top it with some olive oil. It stimulates protein production and prevents breakdown of tissues. It also helps your body sort glucose, amino acids, and nutrients properly. You order some turkey for a main course. It's rich zinc that helps protein production. You order some broccoli on the side that's also full of zinc. 
Buckwheat ends up on the plate as a source of many nutrients and vitamin B6. It helps your body absorb amino acids from the foods you eat. You get some pineapple for dessert. Other fruits won't help your body building plants, but pineapple contains enzymes that digest protein. Plus, it has anti-inflammatory properties to soothe post-workout pain and swelling. Almonds will be a good snack to go. They're rich in vitamin E, and you need it to repair cellular damage caused by exercise. A couple hours after lunch, you decide to do some cardio and go for a run. You bump into your friend who's recently bulked up. She says you shouldn't overdo it with cardio because you'll lose calories you need to grow your muscles. She recommends focusing on resistance training instead. If your body recovers well after it, you can add some HIIT cardio sessions into your workout. When you do these short and intense exercises, your heart rate goes up and muscle growth continues. You get home and make a record in your workout journal. You put down the exercises you did today with the number of reps and sets. Without a journal like this, you can't be sure what's working for you and how fast your progress is. You also measure your weight. When it stays the same and you see your workout results, you might be losing fat and increasing muscle. So it's important to monitor your body fat loss than your net weight loss. You plan your workout for the next day. You train each muscle group twice per week to help your muscles adapt and grow faster. You also make a list of meals you'll be eating the next day to avoid any junk food or drive throughs You stay patient and consistent as you know muscle growth doesn't happen overnight. Three months later, you see the first results like all beginners. You gain 12 pounds of healthy muscles. After this point, your progress will slow down, but you stay true to your plan and it works. Dumbbells, unlike the barbell bench press, let both of your arms do equal shares of work. They also engage smaller muscles, not just big ones, and are great for building your chest. Start with a quick warm-up to get your muscles ready. Superman hold. Lie on the floor with your face down. Extend your arms and legs. Keep your glutes tight. Lift your thighs and feet a couple inches off the ground. While doing this, lift your arms and chest in the air too, squeezing the back muscles. Hold it like that for two to three seconds, then go back to the floor. That's one rep. Do three sets of 10 to 15 reps. Mobile table. Sit on the floor with palms and feet flat on the ground. Lift your hips so that your body is parallel to the floor and your knees are bent at a 90 degree angle. Engage your core and look at the ceiling when you're up. Hold it like that for 2 to 3 seconds and go down. Do it like this for 45 to 60 seconds. Bridged Floor Press Lie down on your back and bend your knees. Feet are flat on the ground. Dumbbells are over the chest with palms facing each other. Go up with your hips. Squeeze the glutes while pressing the balls of the feet to the ground. Your body needs to be a straight line from shoulders to the knees. Go down with hips and dumbbells together. Stop when you're at the bottom. Then go back up in the bridged position as you bring the dumbbells back together. When doing this exercise, you're not only activating your chest, but hamstrings and glutes too. Fly press. Lie on a bench, hold dumbbells above the chest at arm's length, palms are faced inward. Now go down with dumbbells out to the sides. Do slow and controlled movements. As you're lowering the dumbbells, bend the elbows at the same time and squeeze the shoulder blades together. You'll feel a comfortable stretch in your chest. The elbows go down at a 90 degree angle. If you can't get into a fully stretched position, reduce the range of motion. Go back, contract your chest, and fully straighten the arms until you're back where you started. You can do an incline version of this exercise too. Fly press is a great workout for both building muscles and strengthening the shoulders. One arm, one leg dumbbell row. This exercise challenges your entire body, but primarily targets the chest and the lats and stretches the hamstrings too. Stand on your right leg and grip a stable surface in front. For instance, a bench or dumbbell rack with the right hand. Now, bend, drop your chest and lift the left leg. Take your dumbbell with your left hand and pull it to the side of your waist, with elbows bent at around a 90-degree angle. After 10 reps, switch sides. 
If you're doing good, you won't have to hold for a bench. This exercise will tell you if your balance is good enough, and it's a great way to improve it if you have to. Keep your core engaged and back flat. Don't let your shoulders go forward. Dumbbell push-ups. This exercise will target the upper back, core, arms, shoulders, and of course, your chest. Grip dumbbells and go into a plank position. The palms are facing down. Do these push-ups on your toes, but if you aren't ready for that, go on your knees. Your core needs to be firm and tight, and your back flat. Go down with your body closer to the ground, but don't touch it. Bend the elbows and stop at the bottom before you push yourself back into the starting position. When in starting position, rotate your shoulders down and back. Tuck your pelvis to protect your lower back from excess strain. This is a full body exercise. If these push-ups are too much for you, go with the regular ones until you master them and go back to dumbbell push-ups. Standing Upward Chest Fly This one's good for your arms, shoulders, and chest. Stand upright with weights in your hands. Feet are shoulder width apart, arms down straight aside. Bring them up and in from shoulder width and to chest level. Your palms are facing the ceiling when they're up and your arms are parallel to the ground. Focus on proper form rather than a number of reps. Keep your back flat and your core engaged. You're looking straight ahead. Don't put your head down. Start with lighter weights, which you can gradually increase as you're doing better. Dumbbell fly on a stability ball. If you have a stability ball, you can add that too. It will work out your entire body and improve balance. Sit on the stability ball with your feet extended forward. Walk until the neck, upper back, and shoulders are on top of the ball. Your body should be parallel to the ground while your knees are at a 90 degree angle. Hold the weights in your hands. Palms are facing in towards the center. Now extend your arms until they're perpendicular to the floor. Slowly lower the weights out to the sides. Control the movement. When you feel a nice stretch in your chest and dumbbells are pointed straight out, stop. Go back to the starting position. Squeeze the chest when your hand is going back together. That will engage the pectoral muscles. If you want to have better assistance and support from your legs, put your feet apart a little bit wider. But if you want to make it more challenging, place them close together. Stability Ball Dumbbell Pullovers Get in the same starting position as for the previous exercise. Your feet are going forward until the upper part of your body is flat on the stability ball. Keep your knees bent, body parallel with the ground. This is called the bridge position. Both hands are holding one end of your weight above your chest. Arms are straight. The core is engaged and firm. The lower back is as straight as possible during the entire workout. Now lower the dumbbell over and behind your head. Your arms need to be in line with the rest of your body. It's a slow and controlled movement. Don't swing the dumbbell. Pause right there and raise the weight until you're back to the starting position. If you ditch the stability ball and move to the floor with your feet slightly up while doing the exercise, this becomes the workout that challenges your entire body. Make your life brighter and get a bright side tee. Pick your own print. Just follow the link below. Svend Press You're in a starting position, feet hip width apart, and the chest is out. Shoulders pulled back. Grip the dumbbells overhand. Your palms are down. Arms are bent at the elbow, so the dumbbells are parallel with the ground. Now you're in the starting position. Extend your arms out and push the weights until the elbows are straight. Your chest muscles need to be engaged when you're holding your arms like this. Fully extend the muscles and squeeze the weights throughout the entire workout so you can keep the constant tension in your chest muscles. Pause a little bit, then go back to the starting position. Crush Press This exercise is also known as Squeeze Press. It focuses on the middle part of your chest. You're down on a flat bench with two dumbbells in your hands. Hold them on the chest. Palms are facing one another. Press them together in the center. That's the starting position. While the weights are pressed together, push them to arm's length over the chest. Do it slowly. Stop for a moment, squeeze those chest muscles, and take it really slow. Reverse the action, 
and go back to the starting position. Standing Chest Press Take one dumbbell, stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Your hands are on either side of the dumbbell. Hold it between the palms at chest level. Bend the arms just a little bit at the elbow. Squeeze the dumbbell with your palms. This activates the chest muscles. Your arms are extended and straight, pushing the dumbbell away from the chest. Now go back to where you've started. Don't lower the dumbbell over the shoulder and engage your core to keep the lower back safe. So your body needs a little upgrade. Let's inflate some muscles like balloons. First the shoulders, now the trapezius and the lat muscles. Now you want to look much bigger and more attractive. And this result can be achieved even from the comfort of your own home. For this, you'll need only a pair of dumbbells. If you don't have them, just use water bottles. Let's work the shoulder muscles. Sit on a chair and lean against the wall. Hold the dumbbells at head level, palms facing forward. Now push the weight up. Make a short pause, then lower your arms to the starting position very slowly. The main principle is to keep the muscles tense as long as possible. Six repetitions are enough. Do three sets of this exercise, then rest for 60 seconds before moving on to the next exercise. Arnold Press Again, get into a sitting position, leaning against the wall. Hold the dumbbells at your chest, palms facing your body, arms bent. Now lift the dumbbells and straighten your arms. At the final point, your arms should twist so your palms are facing forward. Pause and then slowly lower your arms to the starting position. Your shoulder muscles should just burn. As you exercise, your muscles will get micro-damaged. As your body recovers, new muscle tissue will form and you'll gain more muscle mass. Again, three sets of six reps with one minute pause between sets for rest. Now let's get your delts on fire. Continue sitting, but this time lean forward. Hold the dumbbells at your ankles, palms facing each other. Now swing your arms out to your sides. At the top point, your arms should be parallel to the floor. As your arms return to the starting point, Try to fight gravity and lower them as slowly as possible. You need to do 10 reps to make your delts get bigger. Rest for 10 seconds and do two more sets. Single Dumbbell Front Raise Stand upright. Grab one dumbbell and hold it with both hands near your waist. Now raise your arms with the weight forward to the level of your head. Slowly return your arms to the starting position. Your shoulder muscles are most tense as you lower your arms. So try to stretch this moment. Do three sets of 10 reps each. Archer push-up. Get into a push-up position. Your arms should be spread wide apart. Move your weight to your right hand and lower your body to the floor. At the lowest point, your whole body should rest on your right hand. Your left arm should be straightened out to the side. Now return to the starting position. Repeat the exercise, only now lower your body to the left arm with the right arm straightened out to the side. For greater effect, combine the exercises in pairs. Do the Arnold press and single dumbbell front raise without pausing. Then let yourself rest for a minute. Then move on to exercises for another muscle group. Now let's make your trapezius bigger. Get into a downward dog stance. Bend your arms and lower your body forward. Be careful with your head. Don't hit the floor. When you've reached the lowest point, slowly push your body back. Do as many reps as possible and pause for a minute. Then do two more sets and move on to the next exercise. Scaption. Stand straight, arms slightly bent at your sides, holding dumbbells, feet shoulder width apart. Now raise your arm diagonally forward. Stop where the dumbbells are at head height. Palms should be facing each other. At the top position, your arms should be open like the letter Y. Then slowly return your hands to the starting position. Three sets of 10 reps should be enough. Don't forget to pause for rest between each set. Now lay on your stomach, bend your arms and hold the dumbbells near your head, palms facing down. Raise the dumbbells slightly above the floor. Slowly push the weight forward and straighten your arms. Then bend your arms and move the dumbbells backwards. Try to move your elbows as far back as possible and squeeze the back muscles. Do 8 to 15 reps. If you have strength left, do another set. Dumbbell Shrug Stand straight. Hold the dumbbells at waist level, palms facing each other. Try to raise your shoulders as high as you can. Then lower your shoulders to the starting position. You can make circular movements with your shoulders to be more effective. It's important to keep your back straight and don't let your dumbbell arms swing. Do as many reps as possible. Your shoulders and trapezius should just burn.
then rest for a minute and do another set. Dumbbell Snatch Stand straight with your feet shoulder width apart. The weight should be on the floor parallel to you. Sit down and grab the dumbbell with one hand. Your weight should be on your heels. Now push with your feet and start getting up with the weight. At the same time, lift your arm and bend near your chest with your palm facing you. Then push off with your legs again and push your arm up and straighten it over your head with the palm forward. Only now, your legs should be straight. Return to the starting position. Lower your arm with the weight to your chest and bend your legs slightly. Then lower the weight to the floor and squat down completely. This is a blast exercise for your back, but you need to be well warmed up so you don't get injured. If you do 10 reps for one arm and then 10 for another, this will also be great cardio. Now we'll make your wings bigger. Dumbbell pullovers. Lie down on a bench and grab one dumbbell with both hands. Place it straightened out behind your head. Lift your arms up toward the ceiling, then lower your arms back down, squeezing your back. The more you tense those muscles, the better. Do 15 reps and take a pause to rest. Three sets would be perfect. Dumbbell row. Take a dumbbell in your right hand. Use your left knee and left hand to lean against the bench. Your body should be almost parallel to the floor. Your right arm with the weight should be straight, hanging down. Lift the weight towards your chest. Keep your core tight. Engage your back and lat muscles to lift the weight. Now slowly lower your arm with the dumbbell. If the weight is heavy enough, do 10 reps for each arm. Then rest for a minute and repeat the exercise. Renegade Row Take the push-up position, only now you have to lean on the dumbbells. Palms facing each other, move the weight to the left hand. Lift your right arm with the weight to your side. Then lower your arm to the floor and repeat the exercise with the other arm. Do 10 to 15 reps. If it's too hard, do the exercise with your knees on the floor, and you can always reduce the weight of your dumbbells. We need to keep our muscles tight, not injured. Belly Penguins Lie down on your stomach and lift your chest and head slightly. Straighten your arms and turn your palms up. Arms should be slightly apart. Then squeeze the right lat and try to reach with the right hand as low as possible. Return to the starting position and repeat the exercise on the other side. Try to tense the left and right sides equally. Otherwise, your muscles will grow and imbalance. This will be bad for your back and posture. Reverse Snow Angels Continue to lie on your stomach. Arms straightened forward. Brace your back and lats. Then raise your arms and move them back as if you were trying to draw a snow angel. You need to raise your arms as high as possible to pump the lats. Do as many reps as you can. Pulse Row Stay on the floor. Place your arms at your sides away from your body. Palms facing the floor. Then raise your chest and arms above the floor as high as your lats will allow. It's important to pause for two minutes at the top point. Only then return to the starting position. To make your lats burn, combine several different exercises into one set. Belly penguins, then renegade row, and reverse snow angels at the end. Pick a few exercises for each muscle group and practice 15 to 20 minutes a day. The main thing is to keep your muscles tight the whole time. Don't forget to do a good warm-up before the workout. And after you load the muscles, be sure to let them rest so they can recover for the next workout. Decrease time between sets. You do need to rest, but while doing a set, take no more than 30 to 90 seconds of rest between exercises, depending on your level. Make longer breaks between two sets, but not too long, one to three minutes at most. Keep your focus on the workout. Don't scroll through social media feeds, answer calls, text your friends, watch TV, or generally do anything that may distract you. It's better to do all your workout at once and leave other tasks for later. A longer workout doesn't necessarily mean a more effective one. Find six to eight exercises that work for you and make eight to 15 reps in three sets. If it's too easy, increase the intensity or add weights. For example, if regular crunches are too simple for you, lift your legs at a 90 degree angle or do variations like bicycle crunch or reverse crunch. When you make your workouts more intense, you burn more calories than while having a slow, long training session. Plan your workouts in advance so that you don't lose too much time choosing exercises. You get more efficient when you organize them. Leg day, upper body day, push day, pull day, arms, posterior or anterior workout days, and so on. 
If you're not sure you can have your training sessions on the same days every week, plan a couple of full body workouts in advance. Muscles grow more when you do isolation exercises, but by doing a full body workout, you'll keep your entire body in shape and simultaneously target multiple muscle groups. Choose exercises that require minimum equipment changes to save time. When you take dumbbells, do a combination of a few exercises you need dumbbells for. For example, bicep curl, bent over row, lunges with weights, or any other exercise that fits your plan. Don't choose an exercise with dumbbells only to switch to a barbell later. You'll waste too much time. Decrease the cadence of each rep. If you're doing a bicep curl, the cadence is the time you need to raise the weight compared to the time it takes to bring it back down. A concentric movement is when you contract the muscles by raising the dumbbell when you're doing a bicep curl. Eccentric is when you're lowering the dumbbell down. That's when the muscle lengthens. To make your workout shorter, you can try two seconds of concentric movement, raising the weights up, and one second of eccentric, bringing it back down. Do supersets. It means you take two or more exercises and do them in a row without taking a break. You can make a superset of lower body exercises in combination with upper body movements. This will engage more muscle groups and reduce your breaks. The upper body will rest while you're performing lower body movements and vice versa. You have a lot of equipment at the gym, but you can easily get it for your home workouts too. Opt for kettlebells. They're some of the best additions for full body workouts. You can use them for endurance, flexibility, strength, and balance workouts. And these are four essential aspects of any training. Kettlebell exercises improve stability, core strength, coordination, increase your range of motion, and help you build muscles. Dumbbells are also great for full body workouts, but here you're limited by techniques. The kettlebell shape offers a more dynamic range of stimulation, and dumbbells are more balanced. Bars are great for upper body major muscle groups. With their help, you can do multi-joint exercises that boost the strength of your biceps, back, abs, and provide you with a better grip. You can do things like hanging knee raises, chin-ups, and pull-ups. Barbells save time bench press, squat, overhead press, deadlift. Those are exercises where you can use a barbell to improve your results and use multiple muscle groups. Instead of switching from one machine to another, you get a full body workout by just doing basic lifts. And barbells are great for muscle growth. They also save money. You can buy one and it'll replace all those expensive machines or gym memberships. TRX is also great for full body workouts. You use both gravity and your body weight as resistance to improve your coordination, flexibility, balance, build strength, activate the core, and boost joint stability. Since you're using just one training tool, you can adjust it to your level and switch from one exercise to another in a few seconds. TRX is low impact training. It's not the best choice if you want to gain muscle mass in a short period of time. Machines are also good, but they're mostly available in gyms. Keep in mind that any machine you have to sit on isn't going to be efficient for a full body workout. They're meant for the isolation of a muscle. When you do a difficult workout, your nervous system gets heavily taxed and your body needs a longer time to recover. If you reduce the weight, the nervous system will be able to recover sooner and you'll be more efficient and will end your session faster. Go with more compound movements, which means choosing exercises that target several muscle groups at the same time. Squats with an overhead press or with dumbbells will activate not only your legs and glutes, but also your core and arms. Lunges with a bicep curl will work your legs, biceps, and abdominals that keep your back flat and improve your posture. With two major lifts, all other exercises will be just a good complementary addition that'll help you reach your goal. Like when you have a leg day, two major lifts might be squats and deadlifts with barbells. Try to mix the three main planes of motion or use them in isolation. The frontal plane is about side-to-side -side movements, like jumping jacks. The sagittal plane, such as half burpees, is forward and backward movements. And the last one, the transverse plane, is twisting movements, such as twisting lunges. When you want to have a short but effective workout, make a list where you combine as many different motion planes as you can. You can add lunges, kettlebell swings, or machines to your leg day. If you catch yourself thinking, oh, I'll skip it and do it tomorrow, try the following technique. 
get up and do only one minute of running on the spot, jumping jacks, or some other exercise that will warm up your body. Chances are, you'll do 14 more minutes once the couch is far away from you. Don't eat or drink too much right before your workout. Eat your meal two hours before the session and try to munch on something again an hour after. Don't drink too much water during the workout. It'll make it harder for you to do intense exercises, so you'll lose more time getting ready and recovering from the discomfort in your stomach. You'll hydrate your body once you're finished. Even when you don't have that much time, don't forget to warm up. Three to four minutes of warm up will prepare your body to do better throughout the entire training. It'll raise your body temperature, boost your blood pressure, and help reduce muscle soreness. It can be some jogging with high knees or jumping jacks. Doing high intensity interval training is the most common and effective way to increase your workload and reduce your workout time. It's about giving your best in short intervals of time and then taking a small break of 10 to 20 seconds. But HIT isn't ideal for major lifts like barbell deadlifts, squats, bench press, or overhead press. If you want to do HIT, pay attention to your time, not reps. For example, you can perform one exercise for 30 to 40 seconds, then have 10 to 20 seconds of rest, and so on. HIT gets your body going and helps you burn calories. Experiment and choose the training you like. For example, you can set it like this. Jumping jacks, squats, burpees, push-ups, crunches, and the plank. Enjoying the comfort of your couch a little too much? Doesn't matter what level you're at. Cardio is the easiest and best way to burn that belly fat. You can walk, run, or jog that fat away. There's not much danger of you hurting yourself. It's low impact, which is good for your bones, and best of all, it pushes up your metabolism and heart rate. Get some quality shoes and start off slow. Some people in Japan practice slow jogging, and even that burns a bunch of calories. Apart from losing weight, you're getting fresh air, seeing more of the world, and getting a mental break. Hey, you deserve one, don't we all? Cardio at home can take a lot of the stress out of finding nice places to run or ride a bike. Jumping rope is great for getting your heart pumping, your blood flowing, and it's fun. Just stay away from that bookcase full of knickknacks. Don't have a rope? Use a power cord instead, it's just as good. Just make sure it's unplugged first. Just a few minutes a day can do wonders for your body. Plus, it's a good time, so it doesn't really feel like a workout. Crunches are one of the top exercises for fat burning, and for good reason. As much as they make your belly ache, they burn fat like my dad overcooking a steak. Mm. Like with all these exercises, starting off slow is going to give you the most benefits. It's not how many you do, you gotta do them right. Keep your abs tight and your chin down. Go slowly and try to breathe normally. Want to lose weight and work out almost every muscle in your body? Burpees may be the answer for you. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Burpees sound like a punishment. Now, burpees aren't everyone's idea of fun, but they're still one of the most effective ways to lose weight. Best of all, you don't need any equipment. Step 1. Get in the plank position. Step 2. Jump your feet into a low squat. Step 3. Jump as high as you can and land in a squat. That's all there is to it. Burpees were invented as a high-intensity, full-body exercise that can burn a lot of calories and up to 50% more fat than many other exercises. Try to do 30 seconds of burpees and 30 seconds rest. After a few weeks, your new, chiseled body will thank you. Thank you! Weight training can burn fat fast by speeding up your metabolism. Cardio burns fat pretty fast too, but when you're using weights, you actually burn fat for longer, even hours after you stop training for the day. Now, not all of us have weights sitting around at home, so get creative. A wash basket full of clothes, your dog, a Tupperware full of frozen spaghetti sauce. <laughs> if it's got weight, you can lift it. Just remember to start off with something light and slowly move to lifting heavier and heavier objects. The ideal workout should combine cardio and weights. That way, you burn fat and build muscle. Yogas become one of the most popular ways to exercise and get some much-needed stress relief. It's not really famous for weight loss, but it does burn a lot of calories and it has many other health benefits. A regular guy can burn about 150 calories doing yoga for just 30 minutes. 
Yoga also helps you with mindfulness, flexibility, balance, controlling your food intake, and more importantly, stress. The best thing about yoga is that you can do it in the comfort of your own home anytime you want. Just make sure you have a towel handy. Yoga isn't as easy as you might think. Now, did I already mention chocolate for weight loss? No, no I didn't. But you're not dreaming, it's real. Dark chocolate is high in calories, so we only need a nibble. But who's complaining? And who's gonna stop at a nibble? Mm. The monounsaturated fatty acids in dark chocolate are healthy fats that the body uses to burn calories. These tasty chocolate fats also help control your cravings for sugar and other foods that aren't good for you. Eating a little piece before a meal can slow down digestion, making you feel fuller for longer. Eating a bunch of fat isn't something you'd think would help you lose weight, but there is such a thing as good fat. There are all sorts of tasty fats out there waiting to be eaten. Food like eggs, nuts, and avocados can help reduce your belly fat the healthy way. A drizzle of olive oil never hurt anyone. Fatty fish, like salmon and tuna, are full of omega-3 fatty acids, which don't just target belly fat, they target all fat. Healthy fats are high in calories, so don't go too crazy. Just keep a healthy, balanced diet. There's no easier way to lose that belly fat than by getting a good night's rest. You really do lose fat while you sleep. It's when your body repairs muscles, cleans out toxins, and converts fat into energy for the next day. When you don't get good sleep every night, your body reacts by releasing a stress hormone, cortisol. This keeps your body in fight-or-flight mode, not healing in fat-burning mode. Lack of shut-eye can make you eat more food, since your body's worried it might need to save some for later. You're getting sleepy, very sleepy, and when I click my fingers, you will pass me that last donut. If you're looking to try a different way to change your diet and exercise, hypnosis might be the unconventional way to go. It's not always easy to break old habits, and some people need help to change their behaviors. Overeating, not wanting to work out, bad sleep habits, these can be changed with hypnosis. There's definitely no harm in trying it, especially if you're having a really hard time changing your ways. The only catch to hypnosis? If you're stubborn, it might not work for you. The closest we've ever gotten to a magic potion for weight loss has to be tea. Green tea is full of antioxidants, ideal for weight loss. Plus, you get good and hydrated. The taste of green tea isn't for everyone, so spice it up with some other fat-burning ingredients. Cinnamon and ginger boost our stomach's metabolism, burning those fat cells right off your belly. A slice of lemon or a little honey can help too. If green tea doesn't work for you, matcha tea has an even higher number of antioxidants in it. But be careful! A lot of companies add sugar to matcha. Make sure you read that label. We all intermittent fast, and we aren't even aware of it when we're sleeping. Fasting has been around for centuries and has become quite popular recently. Intermittent fasting is all about changing your eating patterns. Fasting for short periods gives your body time to digest everything you already ate, and it gives your organs time to clean themselves. You're not counting calories anymore, you're counting time. It's simple, just don't eat dinner too late and don't eat breakfast too early. Then you've got a good 10-hour window for your body to fast that belly fat away. Just remember, with intermittent fasting, you still eat a normal amount of food. That's really important. Foods that are high in fiber fill you up more. Things like broccoli, beans, and nuts stop you from reaching for more food when you eat. Fiber helps you clean out your digestive system and helps you absorb more nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. Pizza and burgers are full of refined carbs and sugar. Sure, they make you full for a bit, but then you're hungry again. Now, not all pizzas and burgers are the same, though. Italian pizza has a crazy thin crust and not as much cheese as New York or Chicago style. It can be tough to eat vegetables and fruit when you're feeling grumpy and in the mood for some seriously crunchy snacks, but your body will thank you later. Try nibbling on some almonds, cut up cucumbers or carrots instead. This last one's not talked about that much, but reducing stress in your life can be great for your waistline. Taking small steps to be more happy, more outgoing, and less frustrated can make a big difference. Even just smiling more. Here, try it. You will look marvelous. Morning exercise will energize you for the rest of the day. 
or at least until lunch. So why not give it a try and burn some fat at the same time? It'll only take 10 minutes, so here goes. Bicycle. You don't even need to get out of bed for this one. Lie on your back and raise your knees to your chest. Now straighten one leg at a 45 degree angle above the bed. Then bring that leg back while straightening the other at the same time. Repeat it until it becomes too difficult to keep up the form. You can also level up this exercise by doing bicycle crunches. Put your hands behind your head and, while switching your legs in the air, twist your upper body and bring your elbow to the opposite knee on its way to your chest. Continue this until you can't do it anymore. When you're done, spice it up with some crisscross. Raise both your legs straight at about a 45 degree angle. Put your arms across your body or under your lower back for support and start moving your legs one over the other in a crisscross motion. First get the right ankle over the left one, then switch, all without pausing. Russian twists. Still without getting out of bed, sit with your knees bent, feet firmly planted onto the bed. Lean your upper body back at a 45 degree angle and start slowly twisting your torso left and right. You can speed up, but don't make your moves abrupt or you can harm your muscles and lower back. For an advanced technique, sit in the same position and raise your feet a little off the bed. Then twist your upper body with your feet held like that and don't touch the bed. Jumping jacks. Okay, time to get up at last. Stand straight with your feet close to each other and your arms along your body. Then, in a single fluid motion, jump up, spread your legs shoulder width apart and raise your arms over your head. Without stopping, jump up again and return to the initial position. Keep on jumping energetically and without pause until you feel your heart pumping fast. Side to side hops. Give yourself a little breather and let's keep it coming. Still standing in the initial position for jumping jacks and without changing your posture, hop with both feet to the left and then, without pausing, hop back to the right. Keep your balance and continue hopping to the sides until you start panting a little. Your heart should be pumping again now, and you're probably more awake than ever. Unwind for half a minute and we'll get to the real fat burners on our list. Squat jumps. Stand straight with your feet shoulder width apart. Raise your arms in front of you and do a squat without lifting your heels from the floor. Touch the floor with your hands and push yourself up with force, jumping up and raising your arms above your head. When you land, go into another squat. This exercise is a beast when it comes to burning calories and training your calves, hips, and glutes. And you can up the ante by turning squat jumps into good old burpees. For that, when you squat, don't just touch the floor with your hands, but put your weight on them and kick back your legs to the push-up position. Then, in a single movement, hop your legs back to the squat position and then jump up. With burpees, you'll also engage your core, abs, and even arms, a pretty universal exercise. And I've got another one for you, which is plank. Nothing can be simpler, yet, ironically, harder than the regular plank. Assume the push-up position with your hands propping your upper body and forming a vertical line with your shoulders and your lower body propped on your toes. Your whole body should be straight without any bumps or curves, so make sure your abs and glutes are tense all the time. Stay like that for 30 seconds at first. It should be enough to feel the effect. You can also do it several times during the day as it helps tone your muscles and gives you a healthy jolt of energy for a short time. Let's raise the stakes a little with the elbow plank. It's the same thing, only here you prop yourself on your forearms, not your hands. It might seem easier because of more propping points, but you'll feel the tension in your chest muscles much more accurately afterwards. And finally, the hardest plank level of all, the moving plank. Instead of just staying there, assume the regular plank position and slowly shift to the elbow stance, one arm at a time. Then go back to the regular stance the same way, one arm first, then the other. This exercise is better than push-ups because it doesn't tire you so much and you won't bulk up your muscles. And yet, you'll feel your body properly tense as you burn that stubborn fat. But if you're still not satisfied with your plank routine, you can do plank jacks. It's sort of a lying down version of jumping jacks. Stay in the regular or elbow plank position, then jump your feet to the sides about shoulder width apart. Then, without pausing, jump them back together. Keep on going until you get tired. All right, you've done enough sculpting, let's do some stretching. Bridges. A pretty classic exercise that isolates your glutes and hamstrings. Let's start with the easier version. Lie down on the floor, not on the bed, unless you sleep on a slab of rock. Legs bent at the knees and feet firmly planted arms along your body. You can also put your palms beneath your lower back for better support. Now lift your hips from the floor until they form a straight line with your shoulders. 
Stay like that for three seconds and go back down. Repeat until the tension is hard, but still pleasant. A more hardcore version of the bridges will stretch your entire body. Lying down on the floor with your knees bent, put your hands palm down next to your head, fingers facing your feet. Now slowly lift your whole body from the floor with your arms and legs. Ideally, your body should form an almost perfect arch, but it can be hard if you're a beginner, so raise yourself as much as you can until the tension in your muscles is too great. Then, lie back down and repeat several more times. V-ups. This one's a pleasant distraction after so much stretching backwards. Lie on the floor, well, just don't get up from it. With your legs straight and your arms extended along the floor over your head. Now slowly exhale and raise both your legs and arms until your fingers and toes meet halfway above your torso. Make sure it's your abs working for that, not your lower back. If you feel too much tension in it, something's not right. For a more intense workout, try crisscross V-ups. It's almost the same, but instead of lifting both arms and legs at once, you only lift the opposite limbs. First your right leg and left arm, making them meet halfway. Then the left leg and right arm, all without pausing. Lateral leg raises. Time for some easy and relaxing exercises to wind down a bit. After all, you've got a long day ahead. Lie on your side and prop yourself on your forearm, legs extended, and one on top of the other. Now raise your straight upper leg until you feel tension in your inner thigh and keep it at the highest point for a second. Then lower it back down and repeat. After 10 or 15 reps, turn on the other side and do it with the other leg. Superman! Okay, this is the last one. Lie on your stomach with your arms and legs extended in a straight line. And now, lift both your arms and legs from the floor, balancing on your tummy. You should feel your whole body getting tense, and don't forget to raise your head and look forward. This way, your neck will get some workout too. Alright, you made it! Time to fly away and save the day! Let's warm up your face, head, and neck muscles with some neck tilts. Slowly tilt your head to the right, then to the left. Whoa, a little crackly, are we? No, wait, that's me. Never mind. Five reps on each side's about enough. Now, nod your head up and down. Just five times is enough. Now, tilt your head back and look at the ceiling. See the spider webs? <laughs> you can clean that later. Stick your jaw out until you can feel your neck muscle straining a bit. Then, pull it back. Now, move it gently to the right and to the left. Don't force it or anything. Smooth and slow. Do that whole thing 10 times. Let's get rid of your rounded shoulders. All you need is a doorway, two trees that are close together, or just use your imagination. Stand in front of your doorway. Bend your elbows to 90 degrees, lift up your arms, and rest your forearms on each side of the doorway so that your fingers point straight up. Take one step forward so your feet are inside the doorway. Now, super carefully lean forward. Just remember not to move those feet. You'll feel your chest stretch open. Hold this position for 15 seconds, then go back to neutral. Do it three times in a row. This one's great if you're feeling a bit sleepy. Get up and stretch! This exercise helps you loosen up and opens your chest. It gets super tight when you sit in front of your computer, drive, or text with your head down. Reverse shoulder stretch also helps you open up your chest. Stand with your feet shoulder-width apart. Look straight in front of you and hold your arms down by your sides. Reach back and clasp your hands behind your back. Your thumbs should be facing down. Open up your chest and lift your arms up behind your back. When you feel your shoulders stretch, it's time to stop. Hold this position for 30 seconds. Then lower your arms back down, take a breath, and do it again. If it feels uncomfortable, try lifting your arms up a little less until you get more flexible. Prone ITY. It sounds complicated, but it's actually a great workout for those tiny stabilizing muscles in your shoulders. For this one, you'll need to lie down on your stomach with your forehead on the floor. Raise your arms straight above your head as high as you can. This is the I position. Hold it for a couple of seconds, then relax everything back down on the floor. Lift your arms behind your back into a Y position. Well, it's sort of a Y. 
When you reach your limit, hold it for a couple of seconds, then release back down. Last one, the T. Stretch your arms out to the side to make a human T. Now, raise those arms up as high as you can. Once you're done, go back to the I position. Can you do two sets of 10 reps? Of course you can! Fixing rounded shoulders is important because they make your posture worse. Neck discomfort, headaches, lower back tightness, all that nasty stuff. Wall slides and you'll be feeling good as new. Lean back on a wall and take a tiny step forward. Your upper back still has to touch the wall, though. Bend your elbows so that your thumbs are near your shoulder, fingers pointing up. Press your forearms against the wall. Start sliding your arms up and down. Keep your shoulder blades squeezed together back there. Try for 10 reps. Once you've got it down, try 3 sets of 10 reps each. Turtleneck. No, not like that one. This one. (laughs) Sit up straight in a chair. On your next exhale, pretend like you're a turtle. Pull your head back slowly so that your chin's down by your chest. The back of your neck's going to get a nice stretch. On the inhale, push your chin forward as far as you can, as if you're trying to reach something with it. Just like before, let's go smooth and slow. Try it three times. If you want a beautiful neck, you've got to work out all your head muscles, tongue included. Tongue fitness is key for your neck, plus it really helps if you're feeling lazy or tired. Lift your chin as high as possible and hold it there. Now try and press your tongue up against the roof of your mouth. Keep doing these tongue push-ups as many times as you can. You can feel your tongue muscle down into your throat. Take a little break and move on to some simple tongue stretches. Look right in front of you, open your mouth, and stretch your tongue out and up as far as you can. Aim for your nose. Can you touch it? Not that many people can. Hold it for 10 seconds at the furthest point, and relax. Try it for 5 times total. Work out those lips on your way to the perfect neck. Tilt your head back and look at the ceiling. Hi, spiderwebs! Pucker up your lips as much as you can. Your goal is to kiss the ceiling. This is going to stretch the area under your chin. Want a bit more stretch? Pretend you're writing your name with your lips on the ceiling. You'll need a tennis ball for this next exercise. Tuck it under your chin and press down on it lightly at first. This one can be tricky, but it gives fast results. It works both your chin and neck muscles, keeping the skin firm. Facial yoga can help you get rid of lines and loose skin on your neck. Stand up and look right in front of you. Put your fingertips on that sideways bone at the bottom of your neck. Tilt your head back and gently pull the neck skin down. Move your head down to your chest. Do two reps of this one. Probably a good idea to cut your nails first. When you're done, move your lower lip as far out as you can. Pull the corners of your mouth down. Lift your chin. Put your fingertips back on that same bone and hold it like that for four deep breaths. Finish it off with the face palm. Lie down on the floor, bend your knees, and keep your feet flat on the ground. Press your palm into your forehead. Now try to move your chin down to your chest. When you do this, your palm acts as resistance and your neck gets a serious workout. You'll feel all your front neck muscles contract. Stay in this position for 5 seconds. Try 10 reps, but make sure to take a few recovery breaths in between. To get even better results from this workout and a perfect, healthy neck, follow some of these extra steps. To keep your skin tight, always wear sunscreen on your neck. SPF 30 is good enough for everyday use. If you're going to be in direct sunlight for a long time, choose a stronger sunscreen. You should reapply every two hours. Chewing gum is a good way to get your neck toned. Plus, it helps your jaw muscles stay flexible and strong. If you always chew your food on the left side of your mouth, chew your gum on the right. The chewing process stimulates your neck muscles and tones up your facial area. Remember to go for sugar-free gum. If you spend a lot of time sitting at a desk, 
keep your thighs and calves at 90 degrees. This helps the blood flow better, and it's good for your posture. Adjust your chair and use a footrest if you need to. The top of your computer screen should be just below eye level. If it's any lower, you'll have to hunch forward to see it properly. That's going to give you rounded shoulders in no time. Take plenty of breaks from sitting to walk around and stretch your neck. You can even do some of the exercises from this video as you're working. Do more cardio to tone up your entire body. This kind of workout tones all your muscles at once, including your neck. Walking, running, cycling, swimming, jumping rope, the list is endless. When you're on a diet, you really can't control exactly where you're going to lose weight. It happens all over, and it's different for different people. That's why they recommend a healthy diet and targeted workouts. Eat more veggies, steamed or grilled. Replace sweets, chocolates, and added sugar candies with fruit. Add more lean proteins like low-fat dairy, lean beef, eggs, poultry, nuts, tofu, and dark leafy greens to your diet. They make you feel full for longer. Drink more water to keep your neck looking toned. It hydrates the spongy discs in your neck. They're mostly made of water, and they need a lot of it to stay strong. Plus, water helps curb your appetite and stops you from eating too many salty snacks. Don't sleep on your stomach every night. It can put too much pressure on your neck, as it has to stay in an uncomfortable position for hours. Sleep on your back and put a pillow under each arm to take some of the strain off. If you like to sleep on your side, make sure your pillow's the right height. And if you're constantly on the phone, get a headset or any other hand-free gadget. You create a lot of neck tension when you tilt your head to the side to cradle your phone. So if you don't have an opportunity to head to the gym, worry not. All you need to fire up your muscles is a pillow and some flat surface to lie on. Super Person Strength Exercise Lie down on your stomach so that your belly button touches the middle of the mat and put a pillow between your knees. Take a deep breath. On exhale, press your ankles together, squeeze your glutes, and lift your legs. Remember to keep them straight. Hold for 5 to 10 seconds, then relax your body for the same amount of time. Do 5 reps. This exercise will prevent your spine from curling forward and strengthen your back, legs, and glutes. Bridge with squeeze. Lie down on your back with your legs bent and the pillow between your knees. Push your body up into a bridge. Your ribs should be aligned with your pelvis. Stay in this position and slowly squeeze the pillow 20 times. Then lower your body down to the mat. Bring your knees to your chest. It'll help you relax your back. Repeat twice for a total of three sets. This exercise will tone your inner thighs, abs, and glutes. Reverse crunches. Lie face up on your gym mat and hold a pillow between your knees. Start raising your legs up until the angle is 90 degrees. Then lift your hips off the floor. Lower your legs back to the mat as slowly and carefully as you can. Repeat this movement 10 times. It'll strengthen your abs and will help you to have better posture. Roll down with knee squeeze. Sit down on a firm sofa with your knees bent, feet flat on the couch cushion, and your back straight. Place a throw pillow between your knees. Lean back, grasping the back of your thighs just below the knees. Your chin should be tucked toward your chest. Squeeze the pillow and slowly roll down until your arms are straight. Your head should be almost touching the couch cushion behind you. Hold this position for 4-5 to five deep breaths, then slowly roll back up. Do 8-10 to 10 reps. This exercise works your abs and inner thighs. Pigeon Pose Put a pillow on the floor and kneel down in a tabletop position over it. Slowly and carefully, place one knee under your chest and leave your other leg straight behind you. Walk your hands forward to lift your head, chest, and shoulders. Relax your arms on the pillow. Close your eyes and relax in this position for 3 minutes. 
Then switch legs. This exercise will help you stretch the hip area, improve your posture, and even become less stressed. Hip knee pillow press. Lie down on the floor with your toes pointed straight ahead and your feet flat on the floor. Your thighs should be in alignment with your hips, your knees bent at 90 degrees and positioned over your feet. Place a firm pillow between your knees and squeeze it for 10 seconds before relaxing. Do at least 10 reps. If it feels more comfortable, you can do this exercise while sitting on a chair. It'll help you work your inner thigh muscles and strengthen your knees. Pillow slides. Get in a push-up position with your knees on a pillow and a towel underneath your both hands. Engage your core and slide the towel out in front of you until your back is straight. Return to the starting position by squeezing your muscles. Do 8 to 10 reps. This is a great exercise to strengthen your core and get some awesome abs. Kneeling ankle squeezes. Place a chair or box in front of you and put your hands on top of it. It'll help you keep your balance. Ideally, the chair or box should come up to your waist. Position the chair so that your arms touch it naturally, and you don't have to stretch to reach it. Press your ankles together and flex your glutes. Hold on for about 10 seconds and do at least 15 reps. This exercise strengthens your glutes and ankle muscles. But pillows aren't the only equipment you can find lying around in your apartment. I mean, look at that table. Clapping push-ups. First of all, make sure your table is sturdy enough and won't slide away once you push off of it. Don't use any foldable or coffee tables. Put your hands on the edge of the table and walk your feet back. You should be in an inclined push-up position. Lower yourself to do a push-up and then push off the table so that your hands leave its surface. Clap your hands, then brace yourself and return to the starting position. Do 10 reps. If you're not comfortable with the whole clapping situation, just do good old incline push-ups. Now, how about that chair? Step-ups to reverse lunges. Put a sturdy chair in front of you. Place your right foot on top of it. Step up and straighten your right leg. Your left leg should be bent at a 90-degree angle. Step off the chair, send your right leg behind you, and lower into a lunge. Return to the starting position and switch legs. Do 10 to 15 reps. Now, why don't you use some paper plates? Reverse lunges to lateral lunges. Place a paper plate under your sliding foot. That's the one that will go behind you. Lower yourself into a reverse lunge, then drag the paper plate, along with your foot, up to the starting position. From here, move the plate and your foot into a side lunge. Change sides after each 30 seconds. Ah, wait! (laughs) You've totally forgotten about toilet paper! Plank stack. Place three to four rolls of toilet paper on top of one another. Go into the plank position. The toilet paper tower should be on your right. Using only your right hand, take the rolls one by one and stack them on your left. When the stack is ready, use your left hand to build a new tower on your right side. A clock on the floor. Stand straight and imagine there's a clock face around you. Place a roll of toilet paper at 12, it's directly in front of you, 10, and 2. Stand on your left leg. With your right hand, reach down and touch the toilet paper at 10. Return to the standing position, then continue with the other two rolls. Remember to keep your core engaged, it'll improve your balance. After you finish, switch sides. Do 5 reps on each side. Now pay attention to your amazing kitchen counter. You can use it to do knee lifts. Hold on to the counter with your left hand. Bring your right leg behind in a curtsy position. As you squat with your left leg, remember to squeeze your inner thighs. After you raise your body, turn toward the counter and bring your right knee up and around to tap the surface. Pause for several seconds, then repeat. Do 10 to 15 reps on each side. Counter push-ups with knee pull. 
Stand facing the counter an arm's length away. Lean forward and place your hands on the edge. They should be shoulder-width apart. Get into an upright plank position. Lower your chest towards the counter to do a push-up. But as you come down, also bring your right knee forward. Remember to engage your abs. Return to the starting position, pause, and then repeat with the other leg. Do 10 to 15 reps on each side. And since you're in the kitchen, why don't you grab that pan? Pan dips. Use both of your hands to hold your largest pan by its handle above your head. Keeping your elbows in and forward, slowly lower the pan behind your head. Pause for a couple of seconds, then lift it back up again. Do 20 reps. This exercise will help you work your triceps. And you'll already have your pan out to cook some dinner. Multitasking! What a concept! Running in place with your knees up engages the core and all the muscles in your legs. It improves flexibility, coordination, hip mobility, the strength of hip flexors hey, we could all be a little more hip and get your heart rate up. Get in the starting position with your feet hip width apart. Lift your right knee to the chest. Put it down. Do the same with the left knee. Keep up with the movement and speed up. Focus on your lower abs and activate your core. The point is to always raise your knees to 90-degree angles in the hips. Watch out for these common mistakes. When you lean your torso too far forwards or backwards, stomp with your foot or swing your arms too much. Do a natural light arm movement the same you do when jogging. One minute of such warm-up is enough. Squats. Stand straight with your feet a little bit wider than the hips. Point your toes slightly outward. Choose a spot on the wall to keep looking at the entire workout. Put your arms in front of you and keep them parallel to the floor. The balls of your feet and the heels, that's where the weight of your body should be. Start sending your hips backward first. Then bend your knees and push your pelvis back. Go down and stop when your hip joint is lower than the knees. Breathe in. Focus on staying straight and tight as you go up. Breathe out. Squeeze your glutes when you get to the top. Common mistakes? When you don't keep your knees in line with the feet, don't move your knees toward each other. Next, jumping jacks. Stand upright, put your legs together and arms at the sides. Bend your knees a bit, jump into the air, and spread the legs to the width of your shoulders. Arms go out and over your head, then jump back to where you started. Common mistakes? When you put your arms by your sides while the feet are out wide, or anything else that puts you out of rhythm. Keep the posture straight and firm. It can be easier with good shoes on, since it's a high-impact exercise that may put stress on your feet or knees. One minute! Go! Push-ups are great for building shoulders, triceps, and pectoral muscles. Go down into the plank position, place your hands under the shoulders or just a little bit wider, palms flat on the floor or a mat. Keep your arms and legs straight, feet together, back flat. Pull your abs in, then bend your arms and go down until your chest almost touches the floor. Stop a little bit there, and push yourself back up. Here's some common mistakes. When the hands are too far forward, you don't use your core or abs properly, which can stress out some other muscles or worse, your joints. Number two, elbows are pointed out to the side, which can cause shoulder pain. And the last one is when hips are too low. Use your abs to stabilize the entire body and level your hips with the shoulders. If the basic variation is too hard for you right now, prop yourself on your knees instead of the toes. Reverse lunges work on your glutes, thighs, and calves. You know, little cows. Nah. Stand up straight, place your hands on the hips. Now take a big step back with your right foot. While doing that, go low with your hips so your front one is parallel to the floor with the knee over the ankle. Your right knee is pointed toward the floor and is bent at a 90-degree angle, heel lifted. Now go back to the starting position by pressing your right heel into the floor. Change the leg now. Some common mistakes? You don't bend the back knee enough. That way, you're straining your hip flexors. Make a broad step or you risk losing your balance. Don't lean too far backward, engage your core, and keep your abdominals firm and tight to stay straight. Mountain climbers are a great cardio exercise that strengthens your core. No, really! Get into a push-up position, hands shoulder-width apart, 
Make sure your weight is evenly distributed between your toes and your hands. Pull your right knee closer to the right elbow, touch it if possible, then put it back to the starting position. Do the same with the other leg. Now catch the rhythm and prepare to sweat. Common mistakes? When your hips are too low, you can hurt your back and add some extra strain on the spine. Don't favor or lean on one side after you lift one leg off the ground. Hips need to stay even, and your body has to be stable. Don't bounce on your toes. It may seem more difficult at first, but it doesn't engage your core, nor does it keep it stable. Bicycle crunches are an intermediate variation of the basic crunch where you work on both your obliques and abs. Lie on your back, bend the knees with the feet hip-width apart on the floor. Put the arms behind your head. You can interlace your fingers, but make sure your elbows are wide and pointing outward. Bring your knees up and keep them at 90 degrees. Lift the upper part of your body a little bit. Careful, you don't want to strain your neck. Now you're in the starting position. Exhale while rotating your torso. Start moving with the right elbow and left knee towards each other. Focus on the movement. Strength needs to come from the rib cage, not the elbows. Take 1-2 to seconds while there, then inhale and go back to the center. Do the same with the left elbow and right knee. That's one rep. Common mistakes? You tug on your neck when the elbow and knee are getting closer toward each other. Unlace your fingers so you're not tempted to cheat and push your head. Rotate from your core only, not from your hips or neck. Keep the shoulders relaxed and your lower back on the floor. Don't sprint through these crunches and do them too fast because you'll miss engaging some of the important ab muscles. Control the movement and slow down if needed. Butt kicks. They work your cardiovascular system, strengthen muscles, and boost endurance. Place your feet hip-width apart with arms at the sides. Bring the right heel to your buttocks. Then place the ball of the right foot back to the starting position and do the same with the other one. Repeat it a couple of times and then build up speed like you're jogging in place. This exercise is great for your lower body, but you can work the upper part too. Pump the arms at the same time. When the right heel is kicking your butt, pump the left arm forward bent at a 90-degree angle. Common mistakes? If you don't engage your core, you may lose stability or straight position. Make sure your upper body is tense. Don't land on your heels, but on the balls of your feet. And the ultimate challenging and one of the most tiring exercises on the list, burpees. It's a two-part exercise with a push-up, after which comes a leap in the air. Boing! It burns calories and activates muscles in both lower and upper body. Legs, hips, glutes, abs, arms, shoulders, and chest. Eh, what did I leave out? Ears! Nah. Get into a squat position with your back straight, knees bent, and feet shoulder-width apart. Place your hands on the floor so they're between your feet and transfer weight on them. Now, kick your feet back so you're in a push-up position on your hands and toes with your back straight. Do one push-up, then jump your feet back to where you started. Get up from the squat, stand straight, and reach the arms over your head. Jump up and get back to the starting position upon landing. Then do it all again. Common mistakes? Landing on your heels. Since this exercise involves jumping, make sure not to stress out your knees and ankles by landing wrong. Land gently on the balls of your feet so that your calf muscles take the pressure. If you reorder these exercises, make sure to keep burpees among the last ones on the list. It's complex and you want to be warmed up well before doing these. Don't let your hips sink, they need to be aligned in a straight line with the torso and knees. Tighten your glutes and abs to avoid that. Do the easier version if you can't do the regular one. Make it slower and without the push-up. I'm tired just watching the pictures. Time for a nap. HIIT is a set of high-intensity workouts that usually range from 10 to 30 minutes, depending on the exercise selection, number of exercises, and difficulty. There are three planes of motion. The first is the sagittal plane that divides the body right and left halves with forward and backward movements. The frontal plane divides the body into front and back halves, side-to-side movements. The transverse plane divides the body into top and bottom halves, that's twisting movements. The simple rule is, when you don't have much time and want to achieve the best results, work in as many planes of motion as possible. Here are 7 exercises from which you can choose 6 for a complete multiplanar workout. It's 6 because humans have limited cognitive ability when we're under stress, and exercise brings stress to our body. 
so that's how much we can memorize, on average. We'll start with jumping jacks. Level, easy. Stand upright, hold your arms at the sides. Feet, shoulder width apart. Relax your shoulders, but keep the core tight to stay straight. Bend your knees a little bit. Jump and extend the arms above your head. As you jump, also open the legs wider. Softly land in the starting position. Jumping jacks are a great exercise to warm up your body before more intense training, such as cardio. You can do it for three to four minutes before the hit session, since it's really simple. As you progress, you can add 30 seconds more until you reach seven to eight minutes. Try to control your breathing. Breathe out when you're jumping up and inhale when going back to the starting position. A common mistake is when you look up or down. Look forward so your spine is in a neutral position and you don't strain your neck. Also, don't lock your knees. You need to slightly bend them while jumping to avoid too much stress on the joints. Next, 180 squat jump. Level, easy to medium. Get in the squat position. Your legs need to be more than shoulder width apart. Abs engaged and tight. Back flat, hips backwards. Jump and turn 180 degrees, then quickly go back to where you started. That counts as one rep. Hamstrings, glutes, quads. This exercise involves different muscle groups and is easy to medium level. There are variations here too. Simple squats if you don't want or can't jump, or squat jumps without turning to the opposite side. The most common mistake is when you land. Don't fall on your heels, but on your toes. It will take you longer to pop off the heel, also taking a toll on your knees and spine. Always put the correct form before pace. Don't let your knees go too far forward. Try not to push them beyond where your toes end. If you want to make it more challenging, go down a bit more when you're in the starting position to make your squat deeper. Mountain Climber Cross Level, easy. Start in the plank position. Place both shoulders right above the wrists, belly drawn in. Bring the right knee toward the left elbow with a twisting motion. Start slow if you're at a lower fitness level and then increase the pace as you progress. Common mistake, don't let your hips go down. Engage your core, keep it firm so your back will stay flat. You can do regular mountain climbers to get used to this exercise and position until you get better. In this case, your left knee goes towards the left elbow and the same for the opposite side. Half burpee, level easy to medium, also called jump backs or plank jumps. Stand upright, bend the knees, hands are slightly in front of the feet. Hop back with your feet to a high plank or step back if it's too hard for you to jump. When you're in a plank, take a higher position with the hands under your shoulders, feet shoulder width apart. Jump or step to the original position. That's one rep. Common mistake, when your hips go down in the plank position or you don't have a flat back. Russian twists, level easy to medium. This is a great way to build your shoulders and core. Sit on the floor, knees bent. Straighten the spine at 45 degrees from the ground, making a V-shape with your thighs and torso. Extend your arms straight forward. Interlace the fingers or just clasp your hands together. Use your abs when you're twisting. Go to the right, back to starting position, left, center. This is one rep. Exhale every time you twist. Inhale when you go back to the center. Arms should be parallel to the floor or reach down to tap the floor. You can cross your ankles for better stability. Common mistake. Don't lean forward or let your shoulders end up rounded. The back should be flat, the core firm and engaged. Lateral jumping switch lunge. Level, medium to hard. Start in the lunge position, then jump up and to the side and land in a lunge position with the opposite leg forward. Try to spend as little time as you can on the floor. Common mistakes are leaning forward. Your back should be upright and the core engaged. Also, don't let your knees go too far forward. They're supposed to be bent at 90 degrees. T-rotation or thread the needle. Level, medium. Start in a plank. In a single motion, lift your left hand and rotate to the left side of your body upward until you're turned sideways. Your body and arms are supposed to form a T-shape. Go back to the original position and then do the same move to the right. If you want to up the ante, bring the top knee towards the chest. A common mistake is when your hips sag to the floor. Keep them up by focusing on the core. 
Keep it tight so your body is a straight line as you're rotating. Make your own HIIT session with six exercises. Choose the variation that fits you best. Use an interval timer. Do 20 to 30 seconds of exercise, then 15 seconds of rest if you're a beginner. At an intermediate level, you can do 25 to 30 seconds of work, 10 to 15 seconds of rest. For experts, 35 to 40 seconds of exercise and 10 seconds of rest. Do three sets and take a break between each of them for around two to three minutes. Don't drink too much water before and during the workout. Make up for it afterwards. Warm up before the workout. Either a couple of minutes of jumping jacks, running on the spot, or some other cardio that will prepare your body for intense sets. Start slowly, then increase the intensity. If you're running on the spot, you can do variations such as high knees, gradually increasing the pace, heels touching the glutes. A HIIT workout is short, but not easy. You don't have to do it every day. Try to maintain three times per week, and on non-HIIT days, do some light cardio, like cycling, jogging, swimming, or a different type of workout, such as Pilates or yoga. Push yourself to do your best during the intervals. During those 30 seconds, you aren't supposed to be able to talk in full sentences. HIIT efficiently burns calories in less time and workouts are shorter than regular training sessions. If you have a flexible schedule, it's best to do it in the late morning. And if you have a regular 9 to 5 job, morning is great to get your body moving. And the evening is good to de-stress. After the HIIT, don't forget to have some good sleep, proper nutrition, hydration, and a good stretch. If you're looking for a magic tool to wake up your brain and boost concentration before work or study, these simple exercises are meant for you. You can do each of these tips for about 25 seconds or extend the time if you wish. Thumb and hand reflexology can work directly with your brain. So let's begin with some finger warm-ups. Pull your hands in front of you or put them on a table. Stick out the thumb of the left hand and the little finger of the right hand. And now, vice versa. Hold the previous fingers back and stick out the little finger of the left hand and the right thumb of the right hand. Continue switching the fingers and gradually raise the speed. This exercise improves synchronization between your right and left brain and boosts concentration. Well, how many times can you go back and forth without messing it up? No worries, the more you practice, the easier it gets. Now, gently stick out all your fingers and put your palms together. Cross the corresponding fingers of your right and left hands towards each other as if they were hugging. Move from your thumbs to the little fingers and then back. When your brain gets used to this exercise, gradually increase the speed. When you get confident enough, you can bring this task to the next level. Try to cross two pairs of nearby fingers at the same time. And here's the hardest step for supermen. Cross two pairs through your fingers, little fingers with middle, ring fingers with index fingers, etc. You can also play rock, paper, scissors with yourself. First, let your dominant hand beat your other hand, and then let your loser hand beat your dominant hand. Not only it's a win-win game, it also helps to rejuvenate your neurons. And there's an easy way to stimulate your pituitary gland. This little gland secretes various hormones responsible for many important body functions. Its weak work may cause fatigue, lack of energy, and appetite problems. The gland is located above your sphenoidal sinuses. As you can see, your paranasal sinuses, which include the frontal and ethmoidal, and the maxillary sinuses are interconnected. To boost the work in this area daily, you can use this simple tip which includes two steps. Step 1 will take just around 20 seconds. All you need to do is stimulate the central point of your thumb by pinching it. Use your index finger and thumb of the opposite hand to pinch the thumb equally hard from both sides. Put your index finger on your fingertip and your thumb in the center of your nail this way. Go ahead and pinch back and forth and then release for about 20 seconds. At this point, some of you may begin to feel changes in the nasal region. Step 2. Now you gotta take these two same fingers and squeeze the side parts of the nail bed. Squeeze the nail just like this and hold for about 30 seconds to a minute. You might start feeling positive changes behind the nasal area as you hold it. This area will begin to open up and improve breathing. 
Many people may experience different effects from this exercise. Some feel the boost of clarity and focus. Others breathe better and get more inspired and energized. Some may begin to yawn and feel fresher. But if you didn't feel anything the first time, don't give up. Try this technique again the next day and repeat it several times. By the way, it doesn't matter whether you're right-handed or left-handed. You can do this exercise on both hands. There are many types of scissors exercises for your fingers because they help to synchronize your left and right brain. Let's try some of them. Pull out your right hand, make a fist, then quickly make thumbs up, then cross your middle and index fingers, and finally make a peace sign. Repeat these movements one by one as fast as possible for a while. And then switch your hands and do the same amount of time. When the brain learns to do this well separately, try with both hands. Here's another way. Raise your arms in front of you. Your hands should be on the level of your shoulders. Make peace signs with your left and right hands. Now start crossing the fingers simultaneously, as if your fingers were scissors. Do this exercise as fast as you can from 30 seconds up to several minutes. The longer you do this exercise, the more your brain gets activated. At some point, you may feel that your fingers are numb, but this effect is temporary. If you don't give up, you'll get a second wind and a refreshing sensation in your head. For the next exercise, we're going to use not only the fingers, but also the arms. So make sure you have enough space. Raise your arms in front of you to 90 degrees. Go ahead and bend one of your hands at an angle of 90 degrees. Clench the second hand into a fist. And now unbend one hand and clench the opposite into a fist. Take your time and increase the speed gradually. Pay attention to your shoulders and elbows. They should stay fixed and the hands shouldn't perform any random actions. It's pretty hard to do this tricky exercise properly right away, but you can train your arms to repeat correct movements separately. First, the right hand. Clench and unclench the fist like this. Then repeat the same technique on your left hand. Now that both your hands are doing the exercise confidently, slowly connect both hands. This will help to boost your concentration. As well as the next exercise, stretch your arms out with your palms facing each other. Rotate one arm clockwise while rotating the other arm counterclockwise. Repeat for about a minute and then switch your arms. If you can't accomplish this task right away, try rotating your arms one by one. Next one, draw circles in the air with your left hand. And now, begin to draw triangles with your right hand. Try to do as many as you can without messing it up. Do it for about a minute and then switch hands. Tap your right fist on the right side of your chest while sweeping the left hand on the left side. Easier said than done, right? In a minute, switch your hands and try to repeat. Most likely, you'll notice that one of the sides is much easier to do than the other. Knead your ears with your fingers from the lobe and up. Then, move in the opposite direction. Your ears and brain are interconnected. That's why when you massage the auricles, especially the lobe, you improve cerebral circulation. A point in the center of your lobe is responsible for vision, so if you rub it or press it hard, you may help boost some improvements in this area. And now, let's get down to your feet. Reflexology says that the tips of your toes have a direct connection with your head and the brain. Therefore, it's pretty useful to take a few minutes to stretch your toes and feet every day. Sit down on the floor or make yourself comfortable in a chair. Use both hands to massage the instep and arch of the foot for about 30 seconds. Now, gently slide up and down each toe with your fingers. Pay special attention to the nails and squeeze them one by one. Use your fist to massage the soles of your feet. This should help to release pressure in this area more deeply. Make a fist with your opposite hand and gently press it on the sole of your foot like you're kneading dough. Then slide it up and down the sole. You can also place a tennis ball or a hard apple on the floor and roll it with the soles of each foot 
one by one. Okay, get your phone ready to set the timer. You won't have to do any math in your head counting reps. Nothing will distract you from watching TV. Let's start with a warm-up for your muscles. To do the side reach, stand in front of your TV set with your feet hip-width apart. Bend your right knee a little and start leaning your body to the right side. Raise your left arm in a diagonal and reach for the ceiling. Your body must be one straight line. Hold for 10 seconds, then switch sides. Keep going for a minute switching sides. Moving on to the main part. Standing oblique twists work out your core muscles and the side muscles of your abs. It's good for calorie burning and a healthy spine. Start in a standing position with your feet shoulder width apart and your knees slightly bent. Spread your arms to the sides with your palms facing down. Move your torso down to the right. Your arms and legs must stay still as you do it. Twist back to the starting position and switch sides. Again, only bend at the waist and keep your legs steady on the ground. Keep going for a minute. Another exercise for the upper part of your body is couch push-ups. They work out your lower chest, shoulders, and triceps. If you're a beginner, start with the armrests. Stand in front of the couch and put your hands on its armrest at a shoulder-width distance. Get into a plank position. Your body must be one straight line. Start bending your elbows and go down with your chest. When you reach the couch, go back. Going up is the most important part of this exercise, so do it slowly and steadily. Keep going for a minute. You can spice things up and push off the couch and later go to the floor. Arm circles are a perfect way to get rid of flabby arms while watching your favorite TV show. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Raise your arms at shoulder height and extend them to the sides. Start going in circles in forward direction, holding your arms straight for half a minute. Then go backwards for another half minute. Don't try to make huge circles. Just go steadily and keep your arms straight. You can hold water bottles during this exercise for extra fat burning. Moving on to the lower part of your body. Chair squats are the best for toning your glutes. Stand up straight next to a chair with your back facing it. Keep your feet shoulder-width apart and your toes pointing forward. Tighten your core and keep your back straight. Bend your arms in front of you. Start squatting slowly. Bend your knees and move your hips back. Squeeze your glutes. Your chest must be open and your head must stay up. When you reach the chair, go back to the initial position. Keep going for a minute. Don't move that chair far away. You'll need it for seated knee lifts. You can also try doing them on the couch. Sit at the edge of your chair or couch. Cross your arms over your chest. Raise your right knee as high as you can. Hold it up when you reach the highest point. Don't twist, tilt, shift, or bend your torso. Only your knee, leg, and foot are engaged in this exercise. Go slowly to control and feel your movement. Hold it for 15 seconds. Then put your right leg down and switch the knees. This exercise works out your core and back and gives you balance. To tone your stomach, add leg raises to the routine. They work out your lower abs. Lie on the couch and stretch your legs. Put your hands, palms down under the glutes. Keep your legs squeezed together as you lift them up. You can bend your knees just a bit. When you get into a 90-degree angle with the floor, slowly go back to the couch. Do it for 30 seconds, then make a short break and go for another 30 seconds. You can try lunges during the commercial break. They are pros at tightening and toning your thighs, glutes, calves, and even your abs. Make a step forward with your right leg. Shift your hips down. Both knees must be at about a 90-degree angle. Press your right heel into the floor. Then push back into the initial position. Switch legs. Keep your torso straight and don't lead towards the moving leg. Your shoulder must stay in position. If you feel discomfort in your joints, check if your front knee is in a straight line with your toes. One minute will be enough. When you're doing lunges, your heart rate goes up, which means you're burning even more calories and fat. If you want an extra challenge, try doing lunges with weights. Uh-huh. 
Jumping jacks are as old and good as lunges. It's an intensive, full-body form of cardio perfect for fat burning. It also boosts your metabolism and keeps your heart healthy. Stand up with your legs together. Bend your knees a little and put your hands on your thighs. Shift your arms and legs to the sides. Cross your arms above your head, then put them down and back up. Your legs also keep moving to the sides and back. Make strong and fast moves. The harder you work, the more calories you can burn on this one. One minute is a must, but try going for as long as you can. Finish the workout with a good, simple quad stretch. Stand on your right leg, lift your left foot, and pull it with your left hand towards your back. Keep your chest open and move your hips forward. If you're doing it right, you'll feel the stretch in your quad muscle and your hip. Stay in this position for 30 seconds, then switch legs and do it once again. You can start with a chair to lean on and then do it without a chair when you get a better sense of balance. Maximize the workout effect with some effortless ways to burn extra calories. If you chew a sugar-free gum for one hour, you can burn 10 calories from the chewing process. Plus, it makes you feel full, so you might want to skip an unhealthy snack or an extra portion of your favorite meal. When you're at work, don't stop yourself from fidgeting. As you tap your pen on the desk, drum your finger, and wiggle your legs under the table, you're in constant motion. That's a form of cardio, too. When you have a phone call to make, stand up and move around the room. You'll stretch your legs for an extra aerobic exercise. If you start gesturing with your arms, well, that's another form of exercise as well. Doing chores is also a great calorie burner. Washing a whole sink of yesterday's dishes is worth 100 calories. 35 minutes of scrubbing the bathroom is equivalent to 35 minutes on the treadmill. 30 minutes of cleaning the windows or moving the furniture around is 100 burnt calories. When you're vacuum cleaning for half an hour, that's another 50 calories off your daily score. Playing video games and even good old board games can also help you stay toned. Even a sitting game can help you burn the equivalent of a half a bar of chocolate in a half an hour. If you prefer active games involving moving around the room or jumping with excitement, one such session is almost as good as a short run. Playing musical instruments, like the guitar, is also an intensive physical exercise. You can stand up to get rid of even more calories while you're at it. Singing about 10 songs at karaoke can help you burn another 100 calories. The more emotional and energized you get with headbanging, the better. Healthy sleep also works magic if you're trying to stay toned. When you deprive yourself of it, your metabolism slows down and your appetite grows stronger. If you invest in a good mattress, put away all your gadgets before bed and live on a healthy sleeping schedule. It'll all pay off.